Yo, it's Go, and welcome to the video. This video is going to cover the next three bosses in Ulduar, which is also known as the Antichamber of Ulduar, starting off with the Iron Council. So we've started doing our hard mode progress on this boss fight, and it's been really fun. But you see we have Skull and X stacked together. All that damage I'm getting on X from Starfall is going to be excluded from the parse. The only damage for each phase of the fight that's going to matter is the damage done to your kill target. So you start with Brundir, only Brundir's damage at the end of the fight will count. So it might look different on your details. Your DPS might be a little bit higher from all your splash damage and stuff like that by having two of the mobs stacked. But when you look at your logs, it's going to negate some of that damage. So the first rune of power comes into the fight at about 20 seconds in. So it's kind of tricky. It's like, do we want to hold off Starfall until that first rune comes out so we can get some extra Starfall damage? Or do we just get it on cooldown so we can have maybe an extra use of Starfall during the fight? That one I'm not so sure. I've just been popping it at the very start so that it gets on cooldown. Since it could take, you know, 25 seconds or... A little bit longer than the 20 seconds that it's available before Rune of Power comes down. But the first couple phases until you get to the very last burn phase, you can kind of pop all of your cooldowns except for Treants on some cases. Sometimes, like maybe for progression, you might be able to get two uses out of your Treants. But I would like to have Treants up for that transition phase into the final kill on Stormbreaker. Just to get all the extra damage that in on that that I can. Is that going to be how to parse? Possibly. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. So it's going to be a lot of RNG on how far you have to run to get into the runes of power and unlucky uh, death runes. If you are stood in a death rune because it got cast underneath you and you have to like use your rocket boots to get out of that. That could slow you down just a little bit. Getting a clean transition into the final phase is what's really going to help your parse. That's when Lust is going to be out. Yeah, It's going to depend on your fight times, on when you can use your cooldowns like your Starfall. Are you going to be able to have three of them and have your third available for that final transition? Are you only going to be able to use one at the start of the fight? So maybe it is better to hold it for that rune and then you'll have your second use for the burn at the end. It's just going to vary fight to fight. But as long as you have your on use, like your hyperspeed available for that last phase, it's the same instance as Starfall. You might have to use it once at the very beginning and then hold off and use it twice for the total of the fight. So I just remembered something and rewound it back to the start of the fight. So something I need to try to get into the habit of is instead of starting the fight using Wraths to get a Lunar, I think I'm going to start casting Starfires to get a Solar at the very start. So when that first Rune of Power comes out, I'm not going to be already out of my Lunar Phase. I can have Lunar Phase in this first Rune, so this would be my Solar Phase ending, and then I'll have this entire first Rune to use my Starfall and Hyperspeed for the first time. So this Solar would act like my Lunar if I would have switched the two different types of casts. And yeah, hopefully you don't have to run out for the, the overload. I'm still running out, but eventually we won't have to after we've gone through the progression. So that's another thing. Having to move right now for overload is going to slow your DPS a little bit. If your guild's more comfortable in allowing you to stay in for that overload, it's a way that you can get a little bit of extra DPS in at the start of the fight. One thing that you can do if you're having to move out for the overload since the dots aren't going to snapshot is you can put fairy fire up on the other two targets while you're moving to get out of and back into position. It's not going to do any damage, but at least you'll have those debuffs up and ready for when you switch to those next mobs. All right, so now we're back to that last transition phase. We had the last rune of death come out. Now we're stacking up, getting ready for that final rune before we push down Rune Master and get to attacking Steelbreaker. So the, the cleaner this transition is, the less time that you have to wait and hold DPS, the better. If you're able to get maximum uptime on this final rune on Steelbreaker and do as much DPS as you can with all of your cooldowns, your potion, that's really going to help your parse on this fight. But one last thing to mention on this fight is the runes will snapshot your dots. So if you apply your Moonfire and Insect Swarm while you're in the rune, that damage will stay. But if you 
stay, use your insect swarm, and then you move out of the rune to get out of overload or something, for example, and then you moonfire outside and then go back into the rune, that moonfire is just going to be pretty weak. Damage-wise, it's not going to have that rune buff. But that's all I've got for Iron Council. Let's take a look at the top boomy parse currently. So the top DPS so far is over 10,000 DPS with a fight length of 3 minutes 11 seconds. So with this fight length of just over 3 minutes, it's better for this player in particular to only use their treants once just before their lust goes out for the burn phase. But if you're having a longer first two phases, you, you might be able to get sneak in that second one. And as we see here, they had a 61% uptime on their rune of power. So the more you're able to get into that rune and pump, especially with your starfall and your hyperspeed cooldowns, the better. So that's it for Iron Council, and I did cover this in the hard mode instead of normal. So if you're still on normal, your parse is going to be lower anyways because Warcraft Logs doesn't value a normal DPS the same as it does a hard mode DPS. But now let's move on to the second boss in the anti-chamber, Kalagarn. Kalagarn is a long enough fight, but it's going to be getting really quick really soon. But for now, we can use a pre-popped potion and get Starfall off as soon as you can. Getting Starfall Splash on both hands and the body is going to really get your DPS pumping at the very start of the fight. Right here I'm peaking over 16k DPS and it's just one of the best parts of the fight seeing all the Starfall damage coming up. I've also got Alkin Frenzy proc here too. Got a couple of procs on this fight. I think even those beams have a chance to proc it but hopefully you don't get targeted by those beams and have to move. The more you have to move because of those beams, the more GCDs you're using on your instant cast, like Moonfire and Insect Swarm, and it could just lower your DPS. So right here, I was trying to just stand there and not move, but uh, eventually I did move, but I, I don't like to move on this fight. If you get to just stand still and pump, you'll notice it in your DPS. The damage does count that you do to the arms as long as the arms end up dying, but the damage to the Rumblers that spawn after an arm dies will not count towards your parse. So don't worry about attacking any of those rumblers. No need to Typhoon or hold Starfall, Hurricane, anything like that for those little mobs. I've been lucky. I'm going to jinx myself now, but I haven't been grabbed by the right arm. But if you get grabbed by that arm, just count your DPS out for that week. Don't even worry about it. Come back next week. Try again. So I know some people are thinking of Insect swarming all three, especially when they get the four piece tier eight to try to get some extra starfire procs. We'll have to wait and see if that's a strategy that's going to pull ahead of the normal, just you know, single target rotation with starfall just actually counting with all the stuff that it hits. But let me know what you think. Do you think that the insect swarm all three targets is a good play? Because right now I haven't seen that be a better strategy, but who knows? Overall, this is one of my favorite fights in Old War. But let's take a quick look at the top boomy parse for this fight. The top parse for now belongs to a buddy of mine, Pava Druid, with 10,545 DPS and a fight length of only a minute 28. Something I forgot to mention but is very important is using a sapper to hit all three of the targets. You should be killing the left arm at least once, so getting a sapper should affect the right arm, left arm, and the body and do some really good damage for an extra bomb that's off the global cooldown. They used the Serenite bomb. I didn't use any, <laughs> but next week I will be trying out the Sapper. But other than that, they used Insect Swarm only on the right arm once at the start of the fight, and they also started by Insect Swarming the body for starting to do damage on the arm. So for right now, the top performance is not multi-dotting all three targets. So while trying to look and see what procced my Alkin Frenzy, it procced just over 18 seconds into the fight, and I did get a focused eye beam really close to the same time. So maybe it was just like a batching thing where it recorded the focused eye beam damage slightly later into the fight than I got the Alkin Frenzy, so maybe that focused eye beam does proc it. Could be a really crazy way later on into the phase when we're more geared. You've got a healer with a Valineer. You can say, hey, give me a shield when your Valineer procs. Let me stand in this eye beam and have some hopefully really cheesy uptime on Alkin Frenzy. That's it for Color Guard. Let's take a look at the last boss in the antechamber, Ariaya. The start of this fight is pretty scary. 
but hopefully MDs are going out and you can immediately open up on the boss. Having a little extra downtime waiting for the boss and the ads to come around a uh, line of sight is going to lower your DPS just a little bit. But luckily all four of the ads that are with her at the start of the fight count towards your parse. So getting a star fall off immediately so that you can kind of steal a lot of that damage that those mobs have is going to help you out. So there's the terrifying screech that comes out. It's a, a fear. If you get broken out of that immediately, back to that uptime, it's going to help you out. If you can keep on casting, I got broken out pretty quick on this fight or that attempt there. That's really, really big in keeping up damage on the boss. Once you see that cast coming out though, you can put like your Moonfire Insect Swarm up, make sure that your dots are up so that you have some damage rolling while you're feared. If you have to wait like three or four seconds until the fear is broken, then that could get you away from the boss and then you have to use even more GCDs to get back to the boss. That's when I would use my Nitro Boost to get back in position after a, a lengthy fear. So the Sonic Screech has a chance to proc Alkin Frenzy. We can take a look at that in a little bit. This Feral Defender is an extra add that will count towards your parse. All of these swarming guardians though do not. So you see I'm doing all this damage here to the guardians, but it's just because it's still kind of like progression. This is only week number two. You know, we're just trying to get these bosses down and move on to finish the raid as quick as we can. But trying to parse, I will not be using any AoE spells just for those little tiny ads. And you can see there I got my Alkin Frenzy to proc on the last screech. Another way that I could Get Alkin Frenzy to proc, which I've seen on other attempts, was getting some threat on any of those ads, and they'd come over, smack me once or twice, and Alkin Frenzy could proc. Not huge uptime on that, though, so I understand if people don't want to spec into it, especially just for a random fight here and there in Old War that has a chance to proc it. So we can see in my logs at 2 minutes 7 seconds, I got the Alkin Frenzy. And if I look at the damage I took, at 2 minutes 7 seconds, I had the Sonic Screech. So my DPS for this attempt was 74.53. If I hit the view unfiltered damage, it bumps up quite a bit, adding in all of that Typhoon damage and Hurricane that I did to the mobs that don't count. So this is what your details will show and then when you go to your logs it's going to look a little bit lower because of that damage done to the swarming guardians and the highest dps on this fight was just under 8800 dps with a fight length of 2 minutes 25 seconds i really like this fight length to clean three star falls that you can get in there if you start using it at the very start of the fight and once it comes off cooldown so that could be one of the differences between you know the rank 5 and the rank 1 it was just you know, the rank one was able to use an extra starfall than the rank five was able to get out. There's plenty of other factors, I'm sure, but that's just one thing that could have made a little bit of that difference. And as you can see here, my active time was over 96%, almost 97%. The rank 1's active time was only 93, but they were still able to sneak out some extra DPS. Our fight length was pretty much the same, 226 for mine, 225 for theirs. But I was using those GCDs on 4 Typhoons that didn't do too much damage, and that Hurricane that also didn't count for much damage on my log. So one thing to note when you're looking at logs and trying to compare them with like yours in the rank one or anybody else's is the demonic pact snapshot. So the way I look for that is I find a warrior in my raid group and I go to resources and change it to spell power and then I can see that our first demonic pact was 423 spell power then it fell off for a little minute there and then it got back up to 362 back up over 400 and then we ended the fight with about 355 spell power for the last 30 seconds then if i go to that rank ones once it got applied it didn't fall off and their max during their bloodlust was 480 so they got a, a decent little extra chunk of spell power for at least half of the fight and then the lowest it did dipped down to was 389. So getting a, a big demonic pact at the start with that first starfall and it's hitting all of those adds gives you a little bit of an advantage. So be kind to your warlocks and do anything you can to help them get an extra snapshot. Maybe pass them a p no don't pass them any loot. But that's gonna be it for this one. That was the three bosses in the antechamber. And I'll see you in the next section of Old War.